So after that last debacle, which I will try to get to the bottom of, just not right now, uh, we only have a couple of sections left. Uh, we have NTP configuration and LLDP. They're kind of simultaneously straightforward and not straightforward at all. Uh, but they shouldn't, at least they shouldn't take that long. So first is NTP. Uh, if you're familiar with setting NTP on Cisco devices, they have a concept of NTP master, which is where you set one router to say, I'm the master at this particular stratum and everyone else can refer to me. Here's, you know, some security options and whatnot. VOS doesn't really have a concept of masters and uh, strata. They have they have very simple uh, NTP configuration sections in their config file. So here we see this is router one, which uh, we would set up to be the master. Here they just have a series of servers that they refer to. Uh, these are public uh, NTP servers, which are pretty reliable. I don't have a problem with them. Let's go over here. And right now we're just set up to show uh, UTC time. This is correct. And if you want to synchronize time with NTP server manually, you can do that here. Just like that. We don't have to right now because we're already, I know that we're already synchronized. Uh, anyway, they're pretty standard looking commands and they don't really have a concept of strata or or even NTP servers uh, inside the network. So if we want to make R2 and R3 refer to this, we're going to have to configure them. Let's see. We're going to have to configure them to not look at pool NTP and just look at uh, R1. Right now they all have this 0, 1, and 2 pool NTP org um, configuration setup. We're just going to have to change it. Okay. I believe this is a system setting. Yep. So it says, uh, set system NTP server. And I can set this now to point up to, I guess, the loopback if I really want to, because that address is propagated. Let's mark this as preferred. Okay, and it's restarting the NTP server. So let's take a look here. NTP. Okay, so we have we still have server zero pool NTP org and one and two. Uh, we have a ten one 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 as our preferred destination. What if we want to get rid of those public uh, public servers altogether? Well. It's just like every other command where it's del, uh, and then you continue as if you had uh, typed set. So, it, eh, you know, it's not too different from like the no prefix in uh, iOS. And now, as you can see, uh, I hit a question mark completion there, and it shows me all of my entries, which is pretty useful. So, I'm going to see if I can delete these guys. I'm not sure if this is persistent or not, but let's commit our changes. Let's save. And show the configuration file. And there we are. We have only uh, 10111 as the preferred server. Let's just make sure that we did make a horrible mistake here by pinging 1011 and there it is because we way back when we added this to the OSPF network. So if we wanted to we could, let's see, do we have to do this on number three as well? Yep, I'll just do that very very quickly. It shouldn't take long at all. And now we're done. Uh, so R1 is still pulling its NTP information from those three servers, but these two are pointing only to the loopback on R1. 
Uh, I've removed all the other uh, public uh, servers. This is useful mostly from a security standpoint. When you're comparing logs, you want to see things down to like a fraction of a millisecond when certain events took place. But it's still good to know, and you will have to do this if you're setting this up in an enterprise. Finally, we have LLDP. Honestly, I don't remember how to do this, but I don't think it was that difficult. I believe this is, yep, it's a service. Setting service LLDP. Uh, we also have something called uh, legacy protocols, which is actually how you can gain access to CDP information. So we're going to try that because I believe that CDP is activated on our switch down there. So first of all, let's just put this on our interfaces. Technically, we should not have it on the internet address, so let's just put it manually on the other two addresses. Uh, the rest of them we can put them on all. Interface ETH1. Ooh, you can also set LODP med. Uh, we don't need to do that right now, but it's good to know. Uh, LODP med is a version of LODP that works, say, between uh, an LODP enabled router and an endpoint device, say, if this if this was an actual server using LODP packets, then you would be able to get neighbor information this way. But that's okay. Okay, I had forgotten about this. The LODP package, the daemon, uh, as put into 1.18, has dependencies set for an older version of OpenSSL than is packaged with VOS 1.1.8. Uh, this seems like it would be kind of a big deal. I'm not sure how this escaped everyone's nose for so long. Maybe they fixed it, but I did find a workaround, and the workaround is creating symbolic links uh, just in the bash shell to the uh, to the newer versions of the libraries that you need uh, from what LDP is looking for. I think they're looking for 0.9.8, but the package that's included with the ISO is 1.0.2, so let's just create those. I not sh I th can we do this from the user shell? Let me see. You can find instructions on how to do this if you just search for it if you happen to be using 1.1.8. Like, honestly, I'm not doing this just off the top of my head. I looked it up. I just wrote it down somewhere. So here, that should be good enough. Let's see if we can get back in the configuration shell. Can we commit these? No configuration changes to commit. Let us take a look at the configuration file. All right, we have LODP uh, saved somehow in interface Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. We probably can't see anything really until those other devices also have LODP running and they're going to require that fix as well. Let's just see what the commands are. Okay, we have no d d no neighbors. Let's go configure the other two routers and we'll see see if we can get some information. And here we will be enabling the legacy so we can see if CDP is working.
All right, we now should have LLDP running successfully on all these machines. Let's just take a look at what the neighbor's table looks like. First from router one. There it is. All right, uh, we have, let's see. Did, 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 oh, we, we are getting uh, medium information from our network connectivity device, this cloud. That's interesting. I didn't ask it to do that. Uh, let's see. Port Ethernet 1. Viata router running on uh, VOS 1.1.8. Management IP. So I automatically have management IPs, even though I didn't set them manually. That's interesting. Uh, let's see. What does a regular neighbor's table show me? Okay, this shows me I've got two and three. The interface I'm working on, the protocol, capabilities router, and it still calls them uh, Viata routers. That's fine. And what port I'm connecting on. All right. Well, that works. Now, this. let's do this one now. This is router three. Okay, I've got two. That's interesting, yeah. So I can't look at it from a bonded channel because I think it's a layer three uh, bonded channel. So instead I'm looking at it on the two individual links, LLDP to router two. Let's see. Yep, that all pretty much looks like it should be. Are there any other options? No, just the neighbor's table. Now, this is the interesting. I want to see if we can, if we're getting any CDP information from that switch, because I believe the CDP should be running. So, let's see. Do we commit this? Yeah, we did. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. We've got the two uh, individual members of the bonded channel to router three. Those are showing up correctly. We've got router one. Uh, hmm, that's pretty strange. Why does it say WNGNU Linux? It shouldn't. Anyway, uh, switch one. I think technically is correct. Switch one is getting CDP v2 information from our switch capabilities bridge platform Linux Unix. That's correct. It is an IOU platform. And the correct port ID. So. What do you know? Everything worked for once. How about that?